Hey everyone, Dan here. Let me give you an introduction to the Layers module. I'm going to start off here in Browse and select a photo that I want to work on. Let's use this wedding photo. When you find a photo or photos you want to work on, simply click on Layers. The Layers module is designed to let you combine multiple photos together so you can take the best parts of different photos. This is great for doing head swaps or sky replacements, or if you need to combine multiple photos to create a composite of some sort. It does a lot of the layer-based heavy lifting that applications like Adobe Photoshop do. Let me give you a quick tour, and then I'll show you how to use it. Over here on the left-hand side is the tool well. It has the biggest tool well of all of the modules. At the top is the move tool. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Then there's the crop and trim tool. Then there's a section of the masking tools a section for refining the mask, the retouching tools you're familiar with, and then the view adjustment tools. On the right hand side, you'll see the layers palette. Each layer that you create, either by merging photos together or making multiple copies of the same photo, will appear as a layer, similar to the way layers work inside of effects. With a layer, you can change its order, its position, size, rotation. You can also change its blending mode and its opacity. And then each layer can also be masked as well, so you can combine layers together. When you save a file in layers, it's saved as a PSD or a Photoshop format with all of the layers and masks in place. That way it's cross-platform and compatible with Photoshop. In this example, I want to replace this boring white sky with a more exciting sky. We're actually going to build a sky from scratch. But before we get into that, there's kind of an ugly chain link fence and an electrical pole over here I want to get rid of. So I'm going to use some of the retouching tools. Let's use the perfect eraser. Now you've seen me use the perfect eraser in the develop module. It works the same way here in layers. Simply paint across what you want to get rid of. And it will automatically fill it in with proper image detail. Next, we need to find the beginning of our sky. Now you can go back to browse and select another photo and use the sky from it. Or you could use some of the built-in skies that come with layers. I'm going to open up the little file browser over here on the left, and I'll go to the Extras tab. Inside of the Extras tab, there's tons of included elements that you can use to work on your photos. I'm going to go to the Skies category, and you can see how there's a ton of different skies that we include, which makes doing sky replacement easy. I want to build up a warm late afternoon sky, so I'm actually going to start with this one, and we're going to use it a couple of times. When you find one you want, simply drag it on top of your photo. You can open it as a new photo, or you can add it as a layer. I'm going to use the Add as a Layer option. You can see in my Layers palette, there's a new layer for the new file that I've added in. Let's close that browser so we have a little more room to work. The first thing I need to do is to size and position this new layer. To transform layers, you'll use the Move tool. When the Move tool is selected, you can click on a photo to drag it and reposition it. You can make it bigger or smaller using the corner handles. You can even rotate it by moving the cursor just outside of a corner and rotate it. There's also some tools in the top to make this easier. There's tools to rotate it and flip it or to have it fill the canvas size. I'm going to use the fill canvas option. This will make it automatically fit my size of the photo. Now right now it's on top of my photo. I actually want it to be below. So simply select the layer in the layers stack and drag it in the position you want. I want it below my photo. There we go, now it's hidden. The next thing I need to do is to use the masking tools to paint away the boring white sky to reveal my new, more interesting, colorful sky. So select the layer you want to mask, the upper layer, and we're going to use the masking tools. I'm going to start with the masking brush and use the perfect brush option. The perfect brush will sample the color under the center of the brush will paint away the white, but will stop when it gets to the green of the trees. So I can simply paint through here, and it'll start to paint away that boring white sky. You can always hit the O key on your keyboard, or press the Mask Preview button in the bottom to see the mask. If you're unfamiliar with masks, anything that's white on the mask will reveal the layer. Anything that's black on the layer will conceal it and anything that's a shade of gray, you'll get partial transmission. Now that's a good start, but it's not quite perfect yet. To refine that edge and make it softer, we'll use the Refine Brush. The Refine Mask Brush will work along the edge and automatically detects the color differences 
and will soften and create a more natural looking transition for us. There, now if you look in the mask, you'll see how it creates a softer, more natural transition around those subtle, out of focus leaves. I'm just gonna repeat that around the rest of the branches. There, that's looking better. Now, let's make our sky a little bit stronger. I can simply select my sky layer and duplicate it by pressing the duplicate button. Then by using the power of the blending modes, I can combine those two duplicates together to make them stronger or darker. I'll just change the blending mode to multiply. And then by using the layer opacity control, I can control how strongly I want the two combined together so I can really dial in just how intense I want that sky to be. Now I like that, but I'd like to have a little bit of clouds in there too. So let's go add another layer of a sky that has some clouds. I'm just gonna open up my browser and look for another photo that has some subtle clouds that would match. Maybe this one. There we go. We'll drag it in and add it as a layer as well. Let's close the browser again so we have space to work. And now we'll use the move tool to size and position that photo. You notice how it placed it automatically on top of the layer that I had selected. So let's just move that and I'm going to use the sizing handles to make it much larger because I really only want just the top portion of the photo. There we go. That adds some nice fluffy clouds. Next, to make those blend in and look a little more realistic, I'll just use the opacity slider and pull it down and adjust it until I have just the edge of those clouds appearing in my beautiful late afternoon sky. If I need to fine tune my mask a little bit more, I can go up to the upper layer and use more of the mask refinement tools. So far we use the automatic refinement tool, but I'd also like to use the blur tool a little just to soften that edge of the mask a little bit more. So this will gently blur the edge of the mask and will make those out of focus areas blend in in a more natural way. This doesn't actually blur the pixels in the photo, it's effectively just softening the mask. There we go. We use the power of layers to combine multiple photos together. I was able to replace a sky by building a new sky using multiple photos to create the late afternoon look that I wanted. Now that's just the tip of the iceberg of what you can do with the layers module. We'll cover some of the more advanced features in the advanced video. Thanks for watching.